I uh, want to thank you all for coming here tonight and drinking all of my booze. So why are movies so popular worldwide with billions of people? Why is it perhaps the most influential artistic medium ever? Boys, if you can't beat that bunch of half-witted goose, hey, Dad, what do you want? Well, you're talking to the wrong team. I know I am, but our team wouldn't listen to me. These are important questions, but they're not so easy to answer. I think one of the reasons why is the close shot. The close shot is the staple, the heart and soul, the bread and butter of movies. You see close shots in almost all movies, you see them throughout movies, you see close shots regularly in every movie you watch. The close shot allows you to see a character up close and in person at a friendly distance. How about these? How'd you do that? I would say the close shot is somewhere between three and six to seven feet away from a character. Usually you see the character's head down to the neck and shoulders and maybe at the chest, just like in this shot. You might see more of the character though, maybe all the way from head down to the knees. Rarely though does a close shot feature the entire person and that's because we would then be almost too far away from the character to feel friendly or personal to them. We need to be up close and that means we see part of the character being focused on. Thus a close shot is close but not too close. There are a variety of close shots. Some are over the shoulder shots where you look over the shoulder of one character and see another character which you are focusing on and who is the subject of the shot. Other times there are just shots like the one in this very frame. There's a single individual like me. I'm sitting here from the chest up to my head and you see me at a personable distance. Now why does this matter and why do movies have close shots? I think one of the reasons is that human beings just innately like to stare at faces. Even babies, they love to stare at faces in order to study them, to imitate them, to get some ideas of what the person is about. You, when you watch a movie, get to study all kinds of different faces, especially faces who are attractive. Hollywood from the beginning has been putting attractive people in front of the camera in order to get attention and to drive business. They look for the most beautiful people, and of course the beautiful people modify themselves so they can look even more beautiful in front of the camera. In essence, you have the social phenomenon of getting to watch people, but them not getting to watch you. Have you ever watched people at a mall or an airport? It's fun to watch faces go by and to see all kinds of people, but the trouble is when they look back at you and notice you. Aha, you get caught looking at them. But that's not the case in movies, or at least rarely it's the case unless the character breaks the fourth wall. Characters get to look out into their horizons, they're in their own little worlds, but you get to stare at them without being seen. This is one of the great things about movies. It lets you be an invisible man or woman, seeing people but not being seen. In other words, you've kind of got the ring of power on, just like Frodo does in Lord of the Rings. Close shots show us that movies are really the medium of the individual. For the 20th and 21st centuries, the individual has been a focus of attention whether it's in sociology, in marketing and business, in capitalism and economics, in voting and politics, individuals are all important. In movies and close shots, you get to stare at individuals. Some close shots involve two or more people, though. It's ironic that movies are the medium of the individual or of individual shots. So much movie theory was developed by a communist, Sergei Eisenstein. He developed the theory of the montage, for example, and his movies are laced with shots of individuals. The individuals are used as, in a way propaganda for the Communist Party in the USSR. I think what Eisenstein never figured out was that movies inherently praise individuals for their eccentricities, their idiosyncrasies, for their interesting faces that look like nobody else. For us getting to stare at one, two, even three people on screen and singling them out, isolating them, and paying close attention to them. Rather than be communist and be for the party or for the masses or for huge groups of people, movies praise individuals. That's why we get stars, celebrities coming out of the movie world because we stare at them so much they become our friends that then we start to praise those individuals. Now there are a few movie makers who eschew close shots entirely and these movie makers are really interesting. The one I'm going to use today in this video is Jacques Tati, the famous French filmmaker who plays a clown of sorts based on Charlie Chaplin and Buster Keaton. In Tati's great movies, he rarely, if ever, uses close shots. In fact, his major character, Monsieur Hulot, you almost never see in close shot. Hulot bumbles through a huge modern world filled with all kinds of weird and crazy things. Plastic, automobiles, new designs, and weird sound effects. Tati loves sound effects.
so he likes to show the individual in this vast new modern world. To foreground that as one of his main ideas, he keeps you from ever seeing close shots of him or even the other characters in the movie. You thus don't become too familiar with Monsieur Hulot. He becomes part of the scene, part of the machine he's in, which is the modern world. I think that's one of Tati's great points in his movies. However, these movies aren't easy to watch for the casual moviegoer, in part because just about every movie everybody's ever watched has lots and lots of close shots. We almost demand them. They are part of of the movie experience. So I'm Dr. Josh Matthews. Please subscribe to my channel, get more great movie information and content. You don't even need to buy a textbook for your movie course, just watch my videos. Thanks for subscribing. Have a great day.